don't believe that. I don't know if you saw this. I don't quite interrupt you. The University of Oregon has a new policy. The following acts of expression could be considered harassment. They will take action if you are connected with the University of Oregon and you criticize, number one, you criticize Islam. We're in America, just so you know. They will take action if you claim that homosexuality is immoral. Last time I checked, it was. You, you will be considered a, a harasser if you claim that there are biological differences in aptitude and temperament between men and women. You are guilty of harassment if you reject the view that gender identity can be defined by self-perception as opposed to biology. Okay? That one. Or you can be considered uh, harassing if you condemn people who have children out of wedlock. Interesting times, isn't it? Interesting, interesting. So, why not just shut all the churches down? Because I'm sure that they've offended or harassed someone, right? What about all these years of all those Dago jokes and Pollock jokes that I've endured? I mean, I'm very offended. It's taken a mental toll on me. Right? I mean, what? Hey, according to their argument, that's harassment. When I was heavy, quite heavy, and quite short, <laughs> I was harassed. Doesn't that count? How, how come I don't get some justice? We owe you. You owe me. <laughs> Let's pass the offering plates and you show me. How. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Jesus said it's impossible that you go through life and not be offended. And those of us who have, we just move on and get over it. Right? We're trying. We're trying. Ready to pray? Let's pray. Father, we pray that tonight we will see you, that with all the things in our life, on our mind, things like this that just seem to be silly, uh, you can't read a Bible in school, but you can't criticize Islam. Lord, help us to stand up and pray and do the right thing and just be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Help us to do it right, Lord. Help us to be the best testimony in the best way that we can be and uh, Lord so many so many are sick and it's a holiday and there's different reasons people are gone may you give them safety if they're traveling give them health if they're feeling uh, under the weather Lord tonight may uh, all that we do and everything we hear everything I speak may it be to your glory I pray this in Jesus name amen thank you you can be seated Page 177, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 177.
mental abuse from the nuns. I'm telling you, if you've never had a nun, you've never been mentally abused. They call you names, hit you with sticks, tip your desk over. I've had them tip my desk over. I've had my, this ear lobe is longer than the other one. I know what you're thinking. You just be quiet. You shouldn't have been bad. Dragging me to the principal's office up the steps by the ear lobe. That's abuse. Say, get over it. Yeah, you get over your things too. What do we need to know? Wednesday we'll be here. No King's Kids because of the Christmas break. The ladies on the 10th, I hope that you see that. They're planning on dinner. The ushers are going to come. And another thing. Hey, they all get to whine about it, not being treated right, right? That's why they have special rights. Well, I want special rights. What about those of us who, who, you know, you know, who come up with something? What about those of us who are getting old? Right, Jeff? Huh? I want a cart. I want to motor around the store in a cart. I need a reason. How about just tired? But I want to park up front. You go to the store, and there's 14 handicapped places. You handicap, handicap. Hey, you know why? Everybody's handicapped. They're disabled. They're some wrong. Know what I mean? You will. Ready? Thank you, Lord, for what you do and how you provide. Help us to love you. Help us to trust you. Help us to give, not think about getting. Help us to switch our mind around so that we live life thinking, purposing to give, to do. And Thank you that you did that for us. You knew that there's nothing we could give you, but you said, I'll just give you everything. And uh, you did. You sent Christ, and he was what we needed. He died for our sins, paid for our sins, rose from the dead. Thank you for that, Lord. We celebrate that tonight. And I pray that we celebrate that every day. Thank you for this night. Thank you for our guests. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Seventy-six, one seventy-six. In times like these, let's all stand, shall we? In times like these.
Cherie and Cami are going to do a violin duet. Psalm 78, Psalm 78. God wants us to remember certain things. I don't know if you've ever forgotten anything. Maybe you, have, maybe you forgot what you forgot, but we all forget. My mom had this bad habit of reminding me every time I saw her of all the awful things that I had done when I was a kid. She never forgot. I tried to forget. She didn't want me to forget. She wanted me to remember Psalm 78. So the Bible is very repetitive. And in Psalm 78, you have a reminder of what the children of Israel did or went through in the wilderness when they doubted God. Oftentimes you'll see in the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul shares three times the story of how he was converted or saved because it was so important to him. If you could see what's happening under this pulpit, I keep kicking this baby. I need to move her. But she'll be okay. She ain't dressed right now, but that, whoops, sorry there, Jesus. That's Jesus. I got props up here. I've got stuff. I, my, it's kind of out of order, so I'm going to get a, I've ordered a bigger pulpit comes all the way around and back like this and that goes real high because I'm tired of being short and I nobody's going to give me any money for it so I'm just going to take it upon myself to start a movement. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. God knows what you're going through. He knows where you live. When you don't think he sees you, he sees you. We need to remind ourselves of that. We forget it so soon. Psalm 78. Boy, I don't know if you've 
looked at it, but it's huge. It's 72 verses. I'm not going to read all of them. I'm only going to read 70. Psalm 78. Some of you aren't listening, so I harass you. Psalm 78. How about verse 7? Let's start there. Read a little while. Psalm 78, verse 7. He says that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. Verse 8, and might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Verse 9, the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows. That ain't Christmas bows, that's bow and arrow. So don't think you've got you're in Christmas mode. It says in verse 9, they turn back in the day of battle. They're ready, they're armed, but they turn back. Verse 10, they kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law. Refused to walk in His law. Verse 11, and forgot His works. Don't answer. Don't move your head. You ever forgotten your anniversary? That's why we make a big deal of it here. When it's your anniversary and we sing, John or I will always ask the husband, how many years? And the wife can't see him, thankfully, but we see this face that goes. It isn't that he forgot, it's that it isn't the first thing on his mind. And that's what happens. If it's not right there, then you have to hunt for it. There's nothing wrong with that, but your wife would sure appreciate Because if you ask your wife your anniversary, before you finish Anna, she's got the date out. And my wife will tell you the place, the temperature, the seconds. She will give you every detail. A guy's like, I don't know. I don't know. Were you there? I don't know. It's too easy not just to forget entirely, but it not being in the position, the place it should be. And he says, verse 11, and for God is work. How do you forget what God was doing for you? It isn't that you weren't there and it isn't that it wasn't that good. It's just that you don't set it as a priority. And that's happened to us. It says, verse 11, they forgot his works and his wonders. I don't know if you know, but God isn't just a person. God is God, and he does the miraculous. He does things that are wonderful and wondrous and amazing. Verse 12, marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea. How would you ever forget the dividing of the Red Sea? Were you there? I don't know. Did you see it? I don't remember. How how would you forget that? And so he writes this to remind us as we read it years later. That God is good and God does things. He says, verse 11, wondrous things. Verse 12, marvelous things. Verse 13, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the waters to stand as a heap. That would be hard to forget. Should be hard to forget. Now look, God's been good to us. God's been good to you last year. Some of you have been through hard stuff. He's been good through you. And I got news for you. If you die and go to heaven, that's the best thing he can do for you. Our perspective on this thing is, oh, did you hear so-and-so died? That's only bad if you don't go to heaven. But it's the best thing 
when you go to heaven. I mean, as far as I could tell, I mean, this isn't just work words. I believe this. I mean, I'm not just saying this because, well, that, that's what I believe, you know, because I get paid to say that. No, I mean, read the Bible, whether you pay me or not, that's what I see. That, that uh, Paul said, to die and be with Christ is far better. That's what life is about. Verse 14 says, In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He didn't have to do that. He didn't owe them anything. He decided to take care of them. God didn't owe you anything. You know, if we were really smart, what we would do? Watch me, watch me. You know, we, we, we should be doing, I, I mean this with all my heart. This, just, this isn't just preaching. I, I mean this. Listen to what I'm about to say. Here's how we should be living life. Watch. Ready? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We should be thanking God for every breath we take. Wrong one. The, the breath, the air you breathe in yours, the air you and I breathe comes from God. So when it comes, it comes undeserved. When it comes, we should thank him. You say, I hate when you do that. That's to show you that you should be thankful you don't live with me. Amy? Do you hear Amy say amen? God made sure that they went the right way. So in the daytime, he gives them a cloud. In the nighttime, he gives them fire. Beautiful day today, wasn't it? Wouldn't it be something if you said, you know, I don't think I'm going to go to church. And then all of a sudden, that a big cloud came down. The cloud said, follow me. It wouldn't take you to McDonald's. It'd take you to church. What would be nice at night when it's all dark, all of a sudden this big swirling bush of fire burned. You know, God's working in our life, but we forget that he's working. We're not blind to it. We just don't see it like we should. Verse 15. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink. As out of the great depths, he said, the rocks opened up like a fountain. Remember that? God did that twice. First time God said, hey, Moses, if everybody's thirsty, I, I know you don't see any water, but I'm God. I can get you water out of a rock. And so Moses went over and tap, tap the rock, or tap, or tap, 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 tap. But he tapped it, and water gush flowed. And you and I know, we're not sure of the number of, of Israelites, but we know, we know it was hundreds of thousands. Some have estimated millions. Did you ever take a shower? Remember when your kids were home? Remember when you told them, take a quick shower? We had two rules in our house. Make it quick and don't flush the toilet when I'm in the shower. And how often did it have? You ask my kids right now. If I'm in the shower and they flush, here's what you heard. Hey! Boy, it instantly turned cold. There's nothing worse than that. Man, I don't want that. I don't want you to wet yourself. Just flush later. Can you imagine God saying, I'm, I'm going to, you're, you're thirsty. I'm going to take care of that. They're thirsty again. God said, I'm going to take care of that. Moses either said or was singing, you want me to hit the rock? God said, no, no, no. We did it that way before. I'll tell you what you do. Really put me on the rock. You just talk to the rock. Moses said, what? Do what? Just talk to the rock. I don't know about you. 
I, I mean, I love God. I believe God. I want God to take care of me. But, but I'm not for doing stuff like that. You imagine people looking up there. Well, what's he doing? I mean, I, I wouldn't have any problem talking. I mean, if God said, uh, Pastor Ruley, that's what he calls me. God said, Pastor Ruley, I need you to talk to the rock. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm shy. I don't like talking. You know what God would say? Pastor Lee, I know better. Sometimes you won't shut up. Your people fall asleep. You keep going. I hear you talking your sleep. You don't have any problem talking. God, I'm not talking to no rock. Look, I want you to talk to the rock. I'm, I'm not comfortable with talking. God would say, no, you're not comfortable talking to a rock. All right, I'd rather not do that. Verse 16, he brought streams also out of the rock, caused waters to run down like rivers. Verse 17, amazing verse, and they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. <coughs> Excuse me. What do you expect if you fed? And rescued. When the Egyptian army tried to kill the Israelites, when God literally saved their necks, wouldn't they owe him just a little? Hello? I mean, just, just, couldn't they just give God a little bit? Verse 18, they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Let me answer that. Can he stand the water up like a wall and walk you through the middle of a sea? Can he bring water out of a rock? Kind of. Verse 20, behold, he smote the rock that the water, and here he goes, he's answering that. Can God furnish a table in the water? Behold, he smote the rock that the waters gushed out. The streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? You know what? I was listening to a radio talk program I'm waiting for them to discuss politics, but all they discussed was how bad the drive throughs are at fast food restaurants. And I, people were calling, they were irate. I drive through, I don't get what I asked for. One guy said, next time they don't give me what I asked for, I'm calling the cops. <laughs> and the, the guy leading the program said, you know, you ought to. I wanted to call and go, you all are a bunch of dumbbells. Wasting time. What are you talking about? You hear me now. Listen to me very, very clearly. The Israelites didn't have to drive through. They just stood there. And God dropped food from heaven. That'd be hard to forget, wouldn't it? Hello? Be hard to forget. Yet we live life like they. Why, why won't God do this for me? I would really like this. Verse 21, therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel. Verse 22, because they believed not in God. And trusted not in his salvation. Though he commanded the clouds from above. And opened the doors of heaven. And had rained down manna upon them to eat. And had given them of the corn of heaven. That's interesting, isn't it? The corn of heaven. Verse 25, man did eat angels food. He sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven. By his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls, like as the sand 
of the sea. You know what that's called? In verse 27, a buffet. They don't care what they serve you, but if they serve it in a great big back of a truck, you'll pay anything and eat it. And God said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you meat. Verse 27, like as the sand of it more, remember it came out their nostrils. That's called being full. Now there's the ponderosas, or I call them pondy pants. You know, when you go to pondy, you put on your pondy pants, the ones that go like this. And then you ever loosen your belt or anything, you just keep eating, your pants keep stretching. If you go to those buffets and watch people eat, if it's a husband and wife, they sit diagonally. Well, do it. You know why? Because they fill everything up from them with food. If she's in the way, there's no room for food. So it's right in front of them. Then they waddle up to the buffet bar to get more. Then they go on disability and get a cart. And another thing. Verse 28, he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. Verse 29, so they did eat and were well filled. And he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all, Verse 32, for all this... They sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and inquired early after God. Verse 35, and they remembered. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer nevertheless they did flatter him with their mouth. They lied unto him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, verse 38, but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity. What a great God. When God ought not forgive you, what a great God that he forgives you. Huh? Watch me, watch me. Here's a you. Watch me, watch me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, if you keep God on your mind that everything God does for you, you'll know who did it. But you start thanking him every other breath. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Then it will be you'll forget him every three breaths. Then you'll forget them every four. I'm right, aren't I? Then pretty soon you just live like you want. Then you'll be real demanding. I think I ought to do this. I want that. Verse 38. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them. Not yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. Verse 39. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away, coming not again. If you track this story back, to the Old Testament in the book of Numbers. Book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 11. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I've showed among them? God is wondering and asking Moses how long it would be until his children believed him. They doubted his power because he didn't do what they wanted him to do. Verse 18, Psalm 78, they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. If God wanted them to have meat, he would have said it. God always does exactly what's best for you and I. I don't always like what he does, but he's smarter than I am. So when I start arguing and say, hey, wait a minute. I was mentioning I was sick, didn't like it. Says Amy said, do you feel like you don't deserve this? I said, no, I don't deserve this. She looked at me like, 
And I knew that was wrong, but it felt good to say it. And I know it's dead wrong. That's how we all think. We need to let God be God. We need to trust God to do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, why he wants. Who do we think we are that we would even question him? Questioning, questioning God's ability. If God can save me, if God can take me from hell to heaven, and he did, and he's done others. If God can rescue me from the pit of hell, and, and he will, and he did, then I have no right to slam anything he does. I have no right to question him. The Bible's telling us that the sin of the Israelites was, was not believing that God could not or would not take care of them in their trip as they journeyed to the promised land. When they cried to God for deliverance, God delivered them. When they needed to get out of Egypt, God sent a lamb, a Passover lamb. And he literally destroyed the firstborn animal, the firstborn human of every house that didn't have blood over the doorway of the house. When they cried for protection from the Egyptian army, God dried up the Red Sea. They get to the other side of the Red Sea. They cried for God to keep them safe, and God let the waters go, and the waters drowned the Egyptian army. It would seem to me, after just those two things, it would seem to me that the Israelites would have believed God by then. How much does God have to do? They asked for direction. They said, we don't know where to go. God said, I'll tell you what. During the day, and we read, I'll send you a cloud. I'll tell you what. At night, I'll send you a pillar of fire. And all they had to do was follow the cloud during the day and follow the fire at night. God would never leave them. He'd take them right where they're supposed to go. God can't take you where you're supposed to go if you're not following the cloud in the fire. Hello? Well, I just don't have time for the Bible. Then don't complain. Well, I did. God, look, the, the direction's right here. Everything God wants you and I to do is right here. It's not up here. It's here. You're not smart enough to figure out what God wants, so God wrote it down so you wouldn't forget. Did your wife ever tell you something you forgot? I do that all the time. Go to the store. I'll get there. And I'll call her and go, what was that? Or I'll text her. Thank God for texting. I don't want to hear her voice in that issue. <laughs> you forgot? So I'll text. Or I'll make up. There's a big accident. I had to help dying people. And, and then a bear ran out of the woods. I had to run away. And I forgot. What was it you wanted from the store? She knows better. In the wilderness, when they were hungry, they would wake up in the mo morning and the food would be sprinkled all over the ground. In fact, you don't have, you don't have to go here with me. Just listen to what I'm about to say. This is where I'm, I, I think what God fed the Israelites was the same thing that angels ate in heaven. You say, they, they eat in heaven? Brother, they better be or I'm not going. Huh? I mean, the marriage supper of the Lamb, that's one of the motivations for me. All about food. Huh? Huh? Some of you overeat during the holidays? Well, of course you did. Every morning for 40 years, the Israelites saw that food uh, covered the ground, and they lived as they ate it. They were healthy because they ate it. When they got thirsty, God said, I'll get you water. It seems like after going through that, they would have believed God. All that God had done for them. They got to the point where they were tired of eating angel food, tired of eating manna. They wanted meat, so God sends a wind and he blows quail in. And they ate so much of it, they got sick of it. 
If anyone should have believed in God, it should have been the Israelites. You and I, look, 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 look. You and I, if anyone should believe God, it should be us. Man, you read this book and think, man, God did that. Wow, what God could do. Isn't that great? Wow. All that God had done for them, all that God had supplied, the wonders, the marvels. They have the audacity, verse 19, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? When they were hungry, God fed them. When they were thirsty, God gave them water. When they needed protection, God protected them. If you read the Bible, if you know the stories, you know that God can furnish a table in the wilderness. He did for the Jews. He did for Elijah. Can God feed you? Listen now, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God feed you and I when it looks like we're going to die? Yes. Yes. And so you and I just have to believe that. My Bible says, Philippians 4 and verse 19, but my God, I'm glad that verse starts with the but. But, regardless of what you think, regardless of what you're going through, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why then are there so many Christians who are frustrated Christians who are nervous because they're turning away from God and they're trusting their self in the things of this world. Jeremiah said, chapter 33 and verse 3, Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Thank the Lord for Psalm 37 and verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires in thine heart. Every bird that flies in the sky, God feeds and takes care of. And if God will feed a bird, he can furnish a table in the wilderness. Look, I want to grow. Amy and I have been talking about it a lot. I want to grow, but I don't want to grow in the wilderness. I want to grow on the beach in a chair drinking a Diet Mountain Dew. But God puts us in the wilderness where it looks like we're going to die to see if we'll really trust him. Do you understand? God can feed millions of Jews in the wilderness for 40 years. He'd take care of us during whatever comes in our life. I've never met anyone in my entire ministry, 35 years of ministry. I've never met anyone in my entire ministry that said they obeyed God and are miserable. Drugs have never made anyone have peace and joy that lasted long enough to enjoy it. Rebellion or disobedience have never made anyone happy. I'd rather live in the sewer than do what I want and not please God. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Happy people smile. People who know what God can do and think of God and remember God and trust God. Happy people do what God says. Our Lord can provide a table in the wilderness if we believe him. But God wonders how long it will take for us to believe him. I don't know what you're going through. Listen to me. I don't know what you're going to go through this year. TV, oh, we lost. And they're moaning about all the celebrities that died. You know, Carrie Fisher died, and then her mom died two days later. Hey, the biggest problem is not that they died. The biggest problem is where'd they go? Who else died? A bunch of other netwets. I, Hollywood netwets. Oh, why? You know, hey, the issue's not that they died. The issue is where'd they go? When they died. If you know where you're going when you die. God could take care of anything you go through. While you're going there. 
And you and I have to be ready. You and I, watch, watch. Ready? Can I help you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You keep the Lord first and foremost. And you'll believe that when you hit the wilderness or you're in the wilderness or you're going through the wilderness and you need him to take care of you, you won't have any doubts about it because you've been thankful. Watch. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You say, you know, that, that's just drastic. Let me ask you a question. Is the Lord worth you thanking him every breath? Then what's your fuss? Is your fuss that you're lazy? Is your fuss that you're doing some of that? I mean, are you the one making you breathe? Last time I checked, my heart's beating because of him. I don't have much. I can hold my breath. I know what some of you are thinking. Boy, we like it when you hold your breath. It's so quiet. The only thing you're in charge of is thanking God for everything he does for you. You're not in charge of what you go through. You're not in charge of what he does for you. You're not in charge of what you deserve. But you are in charge of thanking him for everything he does for you. Pray with me. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Dear Lord Jesus, we're unthankful, we're ungrateful, we're rebellious, we're stubborn. We don't like those words. We would rather say someone else is. And we read this about children of Israel and we think, yeah, man, they were bad. God, how often, how many times are we guilty of the very same? You've done so much for us. I read this and think, man, how in the world can they not be thankful? Well, I don't live my life based upon what they did. I live my life based upon what you do for me. So I'm thankful, God, for every breath. Every breath. Thank you, Lord, for every breath that I take. Thank you for every beat of my heart. If I could get in the habit of thanking you every time my heart beats and every time I take a breath, seems to me I'd learn to get thankful for everything. I wouldn't ask, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Of course he can. When Elijah needed food, God, you, you furnished the table. You got him food. You used a bird to get him food. Lord, I know you take care of me. Help me to be thankful. Help me to trust you. Help me to remember what you've done for me and all the things you do for me. And just be thankful over and over and repeatedly just thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're doing and what you've done in my life. Thank you that you'd save me. God, if you did that, how can I doubt you wouldn't do anything else I need? And I don't know, God, what someone's going through tonight. There might be some lady, might be some man here tonight. They're just going through something and, and you're working on them right now. Lord, may they see that they just need to thank God and not forget what he does. They need to just thank God, be thankful, and remember his goodness and how he's all for us and, and he can take care of us and he can do whatever he needs to do to get us to where we're going and when we have a need, he'll supply like we never thought he could. Remind us of that, God. Remind us. Your head bowed, your eyes closed, you're not looking around. I just want to challenge you. Say, preacher, God is speaking to my heart. There's something that I'm seeing something I need to deal with. Heads bowed, eyes closed. God is speaking to my heart, preacher. Before we go, I just want you to know, I'm not asking you to pray. I'm not going to promise you I'm going to pray. But you might just say by uplifted hand, God speaking to my heart. I want to be thankful. I want to be thankful. Every breath, every beat of my heart, I want to be thankful. Up and down, preacher, God speaking to my heart. Heads bowed, eyes closed. God speaking to my heart. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. God's working on me. If that's you, here's my hand. Here's my hand. I'm not, gonna, I'm not writing them down. I'm not trying to remember everybody. You, God's speaking to you. This is about you and God. This, is about, this isn't about me and you. This is about you and God. I'm just helping you to, to confront God over this. What, what, what is he showing you? What is it you need to do? In fact, you take care of it tonight. I'll tell you what, you'll forget. You, I'll take care of it when I get home. No, you won't. That's why we're giving you a chance tonight. 
You say, preacher, I haven't raised my hand, but God is, he's speaking to me, he's dealing with me. That's you, you haven't raised it. Just say, preacher, hey, here, here, God speak to me. God speak to me. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Piano's going to play. As she plays, you're getting on your feet. As you get on your feet, if there's a decision you want to make tonight and do it publicly and really mean business about it, do that as she plays, as you stay. Come on, come on, come on. God speak to your heart. There's something you know you ought to do. Something you know you ought to do. Something you ought to say. There's something you ought to see. You ought to be thankful. You ought not be sarcastic. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? I, I got news for you. Yes, he can. Of course he can. You just love him and believe him and trust him. Let him do that. You just thank him for everything he does. If you're in the wilderness, thank him for that. There's a reason you're there. She's playing. God speak to your heart. If you need to come tonight, you come on. You come on. Pray with me. Father, we need to see all that you do. We're going to miss a lot of it, but we need to see what you're doing in our lives, and we need to be thankful, and we need to realize that if God got us through this, then when we get to this, he's going to get us through this, and and because he got us through that, then now he's going to get us through this, and and so anytime we get to somewhere where we think we're going to die or God can't meet our needs or take care of us, we just need to know that, that he can. It was an insult to you that the people that you had fed, gave water to, protected, rescued, delivered, led, fed with food from heaven. Those people, those people didn't think you could take care of the next step. They were not thankful. They were not grateful. Help us to be thankful and grateful. Lord, work, work on our hearts. We need to be thankful and grateful. I pray. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.